when we left off, we were watching Roger Stone talk to Robin Bullock on the Elijah list with Steve Schultz. Um, it turns out, I found out in this video, it gets really unhinged. So let's continue listening to this and see what Roger Stone has to say and what Robin Bullock has to say. That uh, she rejected the conventional prescription for, for cancer treatment uh, and through the healing power of Jesus Christ and oh. a lot of all natural remedies, my wife is cancer free today. Awesome. <laughs> it is so incredibly wrong. <clears throat> I remember where we were now. This dude said, not only did God heal his wife of cancer, but she didn't take any traditional treatments, is what he's claiming. Of course, I don't believe that for a second. And I don't think he even believes that. I think the guy, I don't think the guy really believes any of this. I think he's simply using it to his advantage, this evangelical extremism. <laughs> I know he it is so deeply wrong that he's trying to convince people of all of this stuff, it, trying to make people more extreme. It's wrong. Even Barry stayed in touch through all that because he would tell us that. And by the way, for those watching, we will have Roger back with Barry at another time so we can, he can give his perspective on that. So, But I didn't want to interrupt your flow. What, anything else you want to say? So I, I think that that's kind of the background. I mean, I, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, I have a great grandson as well. I'm happy to say they, after this horrific experience, you know, they, they said, came to me and said, well, maybe it's time to retire. Maybe you should just withdraw from the battlefield, write books. I've written five books. Absolutely. Time to retire. Um, I mean, if you guys aren't familiar with, Ro with Roger Stone, the dude, has truly done some evil stuff, honestly. And yeah, it is absolutely time for this guy to retire. He should have never been involved in politics. Uh, maybe you should kind of dial it back and take it easy. Uh, that's not what that's not what the Lord wants me to do. Mm. I, pray about it. Uh, I, I get specific, you know, there sometimes it's in a dream. Sometimes it's just a strong feeling that comes sure. over. Uh, yeah. but, but there's there's no question that God wants me back on the ramparts. He wants me in this fight. Uh, he wants me in this fight because he has something specific uh, he wants me to do. Now, I'm, unlike some, I'm actually very optimistic, and I'll tell you why. Right. I've now read the entire Bible. I know how it comes out in the end. <laughs> wow. Good does triumph. In the Bible, in every great battle, the Lord's forces are always overnumbered. But they're always victorious, and he will be victorious again. Our, our nation was founded on Christian principles, uh, and that is precisely what they're trying to erase. Between the the vile uh, critical race theory, trying to turn Americans against each other. Yeah, he's just going to keep using these buzzwords. Critical race theory, in reality, means nothing. It means nothing. Uh, this gender nonsense that they're trying mm -hmm. to push on school children. Uh, the Bible's pretty clear. God made Adam and he made Eve. That's it. You know, there is, there is no other gender. I'm sorry. I really do not believe that this guy buys anything that he says. I really don't. I think he's just appearing here in an effort to manipulate them and nothing more. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm back at it again. Uh, like I said, I was in Salt Lake City uh, helping a congressional candidate there. Um, and immediately came under attack when I talk about my faith. Uh, it's almost a badge of honor, to be honest with you. Uh, and then... Sp yeah, that's how they view it. Of course he views it as a badge of honor. Of course he does. That's why they talk about it as much as they do in the first place. Persecution in their mind is a badge of honor, even though they hold all the cards, they have all the power in the United States. None of that matters. I... They are not persecuted, but they need to feel like they are. Specifically, as you know, I wanted to come on uh, and talk about something that I've talked to Robin about uh, because my friend John Arwood made me aware uh, of uh, some of the things that Robin had said and the things that other prophets had said about a very strange, almost supernatural uh, development where uh, 
there is very clearly, in my opinion, uh, some kind of satanic portal that is right above the White House, can be seen day and night. Yeah. Oh, this is the satanic portal part. I remember hearing about this. This actually went viral recently that he came out and said this. Um, there's supposedly a satanic portal above the White House. And let me and let me set that up, Roger, because what happened is we go back three or four months, and Rob and I'm going to throw it to you in a second. But we uh, three or four months ago, I don't think Robin had seen this yet, and what you're talking about actually presented itself that long ago, and the media's not talking about it. Uh, Robin may have mentioned portals a number of times back then, but then something happened in the visual on a sky cam that was permanently located. And we'll show that in a second. And I said, and I said to Roger, what is this? And we put it on the camera. If it's okay with you, Roger and Robin, let me let's it's play cool. that little clip because this is from a sky cam, not our cam. It's one that's permanently mounted. And this was recorded from that three or four months ago. And I it's I don't even know if you've seen this version of it, Roger. Uh, but it's pretty amazing there. I'll I'll set it up for a second. There's a cloud-like reddish thing with blinking lights in it, and you go, what is that? And then there's a moon-like thing. It looks like the moon or the sun behind a haze, and it's neither of those. That moon-like thing remains to this day. Moons, The moon moves. This thing doesn't move. So it's a, so uh, I'm going to just have the team play that real quick. So go ahead and, and play that, Emily. Yeah. So they believe that there is a satanic portal that's opened up above the White House. This is insane, dude. This is insane. This is so completely unhinged from reality. It's ridiculous. So this doesn't have... Yeah, Trump put the portal there before he left. <laughs> exactly. I see somebody mentioned the Supreme Court stuff. Yeah. In case you're unaware, as of this moment... A draft memo has been released saying that the Supreme Court is about to or has voted to destroy Roe v. Wade, basically, um, unfortunately. It's, it's over for Roe v. Wade. And that is incredibly discouraging, incredibly concerning. Um, but I, I want to give you guys something to think about, okay? Find silver linings, because this is not good. So we need to find the silver lining. What is the silver lining in this situation? The silver lining is that we currently have the presidency, and that means we need, I believe, a simple majority to pass legislation that would protect abortion rights. So the Supreme Court, we were, we were relying on the Supreme Court to protect abortion rights in the United States up to this moment. But it is possible for us to legislate abortion rights. We can not even worry about the Supreme Court if we want, and we can go through regular legislation. And like I said, we have the presidency, so that, that would make legislating it a lot easier. Um, the second silver lining that I see here is that they didn't outright ban abortion. They said that it's up to states to decide. And what that means is that a few extremists states are going to ban it outright, like Texas, Florida, so on and so forth. But other states are not going to ban it. In fact, Connecticut has taken steps to specifically make sure abortion access is available to people. So yeah, some states have banned it, not all states. Here's the third uh, silver lining that I can see. Right now, you can order the pills through the mail, and USPS will deliver them to you. So if you need to get an abortion, you can get the pills by mail. That's a silver lining. That's actually even more accessible than it used to be because of that. Um... So there are a few upsides. I don't want everybody to feel defeated or down. 
so the first upside that I mentioned where we can legislate abortion access, that cannot happen unless we control the Senate and the House. That can't happen unless we control them. And you know what that means, right? There's a midterm coming up right now. Vote like your life depends on it. Vote like the people in your life, their lives depend on it, because they do. Crawl over broken glass to get out there and vote. No joke. Because if we do succeed in getting a majority in each, an actual majority, not just like a 50-50 split like we have in the Senate right now, if we succeed in getting a majority, we can legislate abortion. We can write it directly into the law. So if you want abortion access to return, vote like your life depends on it this midterm. Okay? So those are the, those are the three silver linings I see, and the, that's the solution to the problem. Just keep that in the back of your mind when voting time comes in November. This November in 2022. We have the presidency currently. That is not where the battle ends, okay? Voting is a right people fought wars over. Lives really depend on it. They really do. It is so important that you vote. I don't care what it takes. Get out there and do it. Whatever it takes, get out there and do it, okay? And if you can, if you're capable, run for office. I know it's not always easy or possible for some people, but if it is possible for you, then do it. Um, also, abortion access is written right into some state constitutions, like New York State, I believe, has it written right into their constitution. So abortion access will not go away until somebody bans it outright, and I just don't see that happening. It doesn't seem like that's where we're headed, but we'll see. Anyway, I just wanted to put that on record. Um, I also see somebody else said... Uh, have you ever thought of running for office? I have thought about it and shot that down instantly. It, office is not for me. Not my thing at all. Like I said, uh, abortion access is actually a little bit more open now than it was probably a year ago because abortion pills are easier to access. You can get them through the mail now. That's crazy. Anyway. Let's continue listening to uh, Roger Stone. Sound, but you see that thing? It looks like a sun behind the clouds or the moon. That has been there for months in the sky. Now, this is a camera. You see some refractal things. As this zoom. They really do believe that there's a demonic portal hanging above the White House. This is truly ridiculous. In. You'll see the moon-like thing. It looks like almost the sun. And then you see that red cloudy stuff. And you see the lights within it. And, and I, I showed this to Robin on the air. It's literally, I don't know the date we showed it. And, wow, look at those flashes. And I said, Robin, is that, what is that? Is that good or evil? And I didn't know. So, Robin, I'm going to... Throw it to you. What, what, what did you tell me at the time, and what are your thoughts about what both Roger well, and I are saying? Well, you know, this the portal is real. And what happened... Yeah, totally. Real. The portal is totally 100% super real. I'm convinced of it. Did they literally pull that from a movie? I don't actually know where it's from. Was. Was. Um, it's amazing that the whole occultic world, Steve, knew that on 2-22, a portal was going to open. Now, that's all they talked about. It was, um, uh, they began to talk about it. The occultic world did. They said it was going to open. They, uh, they were going to use this portal and so forth. I, I want to tell you something about that portal that you just saw. If you Yeah, because you're the expert, right, Robin? You're an expert on demonic portals. Funny enough, this is not the first time that Robin Bullock has talked about demonic portals. Um, I'm honestly a little bit surprised that 
he hasn't talked about them more because he really does believe that demonic portals exist and he has for a long, long time. Uh, hang on. Let me see if I can find the clip from this. Um, give this one a watch. This is a two minute clip from a Robin Bullock video that came out on February 17th. Not that old. Listen to this. And I want you to understand something. Now, those of you watching in other nations, you could Google this and look it up if you wanted to or something. But those in this country will, especially if you're my age or older, you will remember this event. They called the event Mississippi Burning. And it turned out, I think it was a pastor that headed up the whole thing. Is it a Baptist pastor or something? Headed up the whole thing. And, and so the Lord sent us down there in a meeting. Uh, we were with the Choctaw there, and uh, they welcomed us there. And, of course, there are, there are people, you know, they're part of our people. And so they, they welcomed us there. And the people that was there, intercessors over the land and so forth. Well, I got a call from a prophet before I walked out on that stage because things got to be very uneasy down there. It was so much demonic activity there. And this... So he's talking about just a place that he went, an area in Alabama or Georgia. I forget what he mentioned now, but this place somewhere in the South, he goes there and there's a ton of demonic activity, supposedly, right? This is what took place. <clears throat> the Lord sent us there because in 64, when that happened, there was a portal opened up for voter fraud. And it opened up and it was a gateway to throw elections and everything from that portal that was opened in 64. And so the Lord said, I want to send a prophetic team down there and close that thing. And it will affect what happens from 2022 on. And so we prophetically went down there. And I even took salt because Elisha threw salt out and healed the land and we went to different places after the meeting was over and threw salt on the place and the team can tell you what a powerful event that that was yeah so robin bullock actually does believe that he can close demonic portals and he controls them and all this other stuff it is truly bizarre stuff dude so this is not the first quote-unquote demonic portal that they've talked about uh it's just Honestly, Roger Stone probably looked into what they talk about and, and some of the crazier things and came up with this idea. Hey, I'm going to say there's a demonic portal right now uh, just to get him on my side. And he I, I'd be willing to bet he probably manufactured it or found some flimsy evidence of it. And boom, goes on the show. Suddenly people believe him. This is so ridiculous, dude. Now, that's all they talked about. It was, um, uh, they began to talk about it. The occultic world did. They said it was going to open. They, uh, they were going to use this portal and so forth. I, I want to tell you something about that portal that you just saw. If you'll notice, I want you, if you look at it and then you look to the right of it, you'll see all the Go lights. Ahead and play that Go ahead and play that while you're talking there. Go ahead and talk. Over see, that. you see the portal and then you see the, all the, the cloudy flashes and all beside yeah. it all of that going on well what it was is is you have to if people start thinking about it like this i remember when when i was uh and it's amazing that roger's on during all this because see the political realm is where the the forces of good and evil come to fight you know honestly i haven't ruled out the incredibly likely scenario that they fabricated this whole thing if it isn't fabricated by them, there is another explanation for it. It is not a demonic portal. The idea that they believed that it was a demonic portal first by ruling out every other possibility shows how completely absurd these people really are. It shows where their heads are at 24-7. You really didn't think of any other explanation? You went straight to demonic portal? Really? Where's the portal? I don't see it, says Bern Jolf Vertz. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what portal we're looking at either. I assumed it was just this smudge on the camera, like this little thing up here, the red 
smudge or whatever it is. That's what I was assuming. Because that's the realm. When they come together in that political realm like that, it's, it's the realm where they, they enter into because that's, that's the realm that governs the affairs of men. And so there's always a fight of spiritual entities in a political realm. It's, I love how they're just making this shit up right off the top of their heads. They have no reason to believe any of this stuff. They have no reason to presuppose this or, or make these claims. They have no nothing. But they still do. They still stand here and claim it like they know what they're talking about. They stand here and call themselves prophets and claim to know. It's always there. It's because whoever controls that controls people, and they control men. Wow. So, and they control communities, nations. You know, the Prince of Persia is mentioned. And by the way, that's who we've been fighting for a while, is really? the Prince of Persia. And what is he even talking about? We're fighting the Prince of Persia. What? What is he talking about? And so, uh, but he fell the other day. Now, uh, maybe we can get into some of that, but I want you to see that the political realm is, ex uh, there's more to that. I mean, that's where forces come, spiritual forces come to fight. Now, uh, on January 6th, now I'm telling something, you know, people getting in trouble for all that, but I, I don't know what you're showing this on, so I'm just going to talk here. <laughs> Just go for it. This is so, on Rumble. This is on Rumble, okay. so just say whatever you want. Okay. On January 6, um, 2021, you know, I was there at... January, January 26, 2021, so six days after the inauguration is what he's talking about? Okay. Oh, is he? did he say January 6, 2021? Let me step back just a little bit, because I want the context for this. Let me just go back to... Uh, like 30 seconds. Let's listen again. Okay. On January 6, um, 2021, you know, I was there. There you go. January 6th. Uh, wow. Honestly, cannot believe that he's admitting to being there. Uh, a lot of people are kind of hesitant to do that now because they know that there were crimes committed. Um, and it's very likely that they're going to go to jail if they were there because a lot of them entered the Capitol illegally. At, uh, and D.C. And I was listening to President Trump speak. I was up by the monument, Washington Monument. And then the Lord told me, he said, now I want you to leave here and go down to the Capitol. So I turned and, you know, you can walk straight toward the. Wait, did he say the Lord told him to do that? Because I know Trump told people to do that, but he's claiming the Lord told him to, right? To President Trump speak. I was up by the monument, Washington Monument. And then the Lord told me, he said, now I want you to leave here and go down to the Capitol. Yeah, he, he did. The Lord told Robin Bullock to go to the Capitol. Wow. So I turned, and you know you can walk straight toward the Capitol through the park. And so I'm headed down that way, and a pastor meets me and hands me a staff. Now, Steve, you know this, but I want Roger to hear this. And so I get to the, you know, the reflecting pool on the backside of the Capitol, yeah, I actually went to D.C. for the Reason Rally in 2016. It was incredible. Oh, my God, I've never seen anything like it. It was incredible. Well, New York City is more incredible than D.C., in my opinion. But at any rate, D.C. really is very, very amazing. I love D.C. to death, dude, really. I went to the Reflecting Pool and the, Was or the, um, the, yeah, the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial, they're all three right there together. Reflecting pools in front of the Lincoln Memorial, and then the Washington Monument is actually pretty far away, but it's so big it's visible from right there, and you can walk to it. It's close enough to walk, but it's actually quite a walk. And then you can keep walking, and I believe reach the Capitol building, um, it's been a while since I've done it, but yeah, it was incredible when I went. So that's what he's talking about. The little one. And I, I arrived at 111. President Trump quit speaking at 111. And so I held the staff up and pointed it toward the Capitol at 112. And at 112, they walked the absolute proof into Congress of a fraudulent election, and they laid it down on, the, on a certain desk. When they did, uh, they had already arrested a man in Italy. They had already done these things. They knew the satellites that were used from the Vatican. They knew all of that. 
What is he talking about? He's laying all kinds of conspiracy theories on us right now. So when they did the whole, I ordered the Red Sea and the corruption to be revealed, and the place came apart after that. Oh my God, dude. Robin Bullock is telling us that some preacher gave him a staff. There are always preachers there, by the way. Always. It's like a permanent fixture. Um, there were preachers standing there when the Reason Rally happened, naturally. People debating atheists and stuff like that all over the place okay a year later i was back up in dc well it was 9.7 months later i was on the other side of the capitol on uh, with the justice foundation and they asked me to speak me and timothy dixon so i held my staff the one behind me over toward the capitol again and the lord said tell the red sea to come back together okay now that was that long that this long all right, two weeks ago, a friend of mine sent me the, the video and the pictures where I held the staff out. The water turned black, and now they drained it, and it's a dry pool. What? This guy really does believe his own nonsense, doesn't he? Wow. Well, remember <laughs> Moses stretched his rod out, and they walked across on dry land. Yeah. And so it dried up. The, the whole pool dried up. Okay, now, is he, is he saying the reflecting pool dried up? Is that what he's saying right now? I'm going to have to go back and listen again, because it, that's what it sounds like he's saying right now. That is bizarre, dude. I mean, th these are verifiable facts that anybody can check. When we were on the other side of it, I said these words. I said, um... Uh, I had said to you, Steve, in a, in a closed meeting we had, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, the giant falls on his face. I said, I don't know why everybody thinks he fell on his back. Yeah, you he falls did. on his face. Well, that day, now here. The giant? What is he talking about? I, I, I'm so, like, confused by this whole line of thinking here. I'm coming up to this portal. So here that day. Uh, after I stretched that rod out, um, you know. Oh, is it? Is he talking about Goliath when he says that? Like a really, really confusing thing for him to say. Okay, maybe he's talking about Goliath. I don't know. I had said to you, Steve, in a, in a closed meeting we had, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, the giant falls on his face. I said, I don't know why everybody thinks he fell on his back. Yeah, you he did. falls on his face. Well, that day. Now here, I'm coming up to this portal. So here that day, uh, after I stretched that rod out, um, you know, Facebook fell. Facebook, the tech giant, fell on his face that day. Face, face, face. Facebook. Facebook fell. And 45, Red Sea time. These people are so obsessed with, like, secret codes and messages and all this stuff. It is so ridiculous, dude. So ridiculous. It, it's really honestly sad. Like, uh, the other day I was talking about something that they call gematria. Gematria is this old thing where you apply numbers to letters, basically. You apply numbers to letters. A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, so on and so forth, all the way down to Z. And they read secret messages in things by using this gematria code. I mean, these people are absolutely obsessed with secret messages. And people really believe this. It blows my mind. And then an Elijah moment. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw the Red Sea time, stretching the rod, and now the Elijah moment. So I called for fire. I said, Lord, send fire down wow. here. Let the world see that you are God and there is no other God but you. Hey, you know, if God sent fire down to earth and it made it very clear that that's what was happening. Somebody prays to God and asks him to send fire to earth right in front of me to prove it to me. And sure enough, fire spontaneously appears right in front of me on the ground in like a fire tornado or something. I'd believe it. Honestly, that's what it would take. Show me a miracle. Anything. 
Show me a real verifiable miracle that can't be explained any other way. And I'm a believer. But you know, it never does come to that. It never happens that way, does it? Weird. Well, Facebook fell right after that. But then suddenly, this fiery portal shows up over the White House. Wait, so is the fiery portal supposed to be good? Is it God showing... It, I thought it was a demonic portal. And it starts gathering around the White House. Now, on Mount Carmel... You know, if if it was actually a portal, if it was really a portal, we could get up there and investigate it. It's not. At best, it's a lens flare or a smudge or something like that. I would rule all of that stuff out before assuming that it was a demonic portal. I'm willing to believe it's a demonic portal. Really, I am, actually. I'm willing to believe it's a demonic portal. You're going to have to rule everything else out first for me to buy that. The battle was for a portal. Uh, let me step back just a few seconds, though, because I think I, I missed an important part here. Listen again. Portal shows up over the White House, and it starts gathering around the White House. Now, on Mount Carmel... The battle was for a portal. Remember that. Elijah against the prophets of Baal to see who could control this opening in the heavens. And Elijah dominated it. And so after we call for that fiery, uh, for the fire to come like Elijah, they all heard it. All the news heard it. Then suddenly this thing starts gathering over the White House. At the same time, the occultic world is talking about a portal. They wanted that portal. That's what you see trying to seize that portal. But it's too late. That fire had gathered, and it started to fall now. Well, I don't know if you're going to say this, Robin, but when the fire came down that, that Elijah called out, it lapped up the water and dried it out. I didn't, it I didn't think of that. Yeah. But, man, it did, Steve. And they went dry. That reflecting pool just went dry. Okay, this is once again another... I wondered if that's what he was saying. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt and assuming that he wasn't claiming that he made the reflecting pool go completely dry. This is a verifiable claim that, that, that can be made. If it can't be explained any other way, if the reflecting pool went dry and we have no other explanation but the fact that you publicly demanded that it go dry, then... Shit, I'm a believer suddenly. If there's no other explanation but you, I'm a believer. That's the type of miracle I would need to see. And so this is how prophetic all of this is. And, and um, see, we live. Okay, I'll say this about what, what Roger said. Uh, I remember when I heard Kim Clement say that. He said, um, Kim Clement, by the way, is this. It, it, this basically televangelist who they hold up as like evidence that Trump is supposed to be like part of a prophecy because he supposedly prophesied that Donald Trump was going to be the president all the way back in 2007. Um, he did the prophecy publicly for something to be a prophecy. In my opinion, you can't say it publicly. You need to write it in a letter and mail it to somebody who doesn't open it until it comes to pass um, because you don't want to risk having a self-fulfilling prophecy. Trump very easily could have heard Kim Clement make this supposed prophecy and decided to run because Kim, Cle Kim Clement said that he would. Anyway, so Kim Clement made this prophecy back in 2007 that Trump was going to be president. I I've covered the clip a few times. Uh, but that's why they're re referencing him. They usually hold up two supposed prophets as evidence that Trump is like their guy that God chose or whatever. Kim Clement and Mark Taylor, the firefighter prophet. Both supposed prophecies are flimsy as hell. He said, remember the name Stone. Stone. And, and I didn't know who Roger Stone was. I don't know that they... Uh, Everybody knew your name then. Does it really get more ridiculous than this? I mean, this is pretty far out there. And he said, I said, uh, I asked a friend of mine, I said, does, 
does President Trump have a friend named Stone? And he looked up, he said, yeah, he has this friend named Roger Stone. This is way back. And God, Roger's poker face is really good, honestly. If I were Roger Stone as a non-believer in this situation, I would be like struggling not to laugh. He is taking this dead seriously right now. Look at his dead serious poker face. Stone face, if you will. When all of that happened, oh, it grieved me when they stormed your house. They did this. I, I mean, I thought, dear God, man, this is a one big show they're trying to put on. But, but you were the one suffering for their show. And I, I, all of a sudden, I heard it in my spirit, and I said it. When the stone is, when David releases the stone, and Trump is David. So when he releases the stone, we sure he, we, we sure they weren't talking about a kidney stone. Maybe Trump had a kidney stone that they were referring to when Trump releases the kidney stone. I mean, it, that seems just as likely as talking about Roger Stone. The giant will fall. What does he even mean by that? And from that day forward, the stone has been in flight. From the day you were released, you're the stone in flight. This guy has worked Roger Stone into his prophecies. This is absolutely bizarre, man. You know, brother, I'm going to say this. Satan is scared of a stone. He's afraid of a stone. It, nothing scares him more than a stone. Well, I can tell you, uh, personally, I'm on Satan's payroll. And I know Satan, and Satan told me he's not afraid of a stone, or Roger Stone specifically. Satan, don't give a fuck. Uh, David came out and challenged uh, what held God's people in a prisoner. I mean, they couldn't even get out of their tents. They were caught behind doors. They wouldn't move. They, nothing. And David comes out with five smooth stones. But he only takes... Wait, are we talking about real stones or are we talking about Roger Stone now? Which one are we talking about? It's one. And that one stone, the word smooth there, means it was chosen and dedicated for a certain purpose. And so he took that stone and, that's, and Satan began to be afraid of that. Because uh, in Genesis 3.15, it says the seed of the woman will crush your head and you'll bruise his heel. And that stone hit that giant right between the eyes. The Hebrew says it dropped into his brain like a pebble in a brook. Uh, I don't remember the verses he's talking about, and I tend to doubt anything that he says without fact-checking, so be suspicious if you're watching this right now. See, what you did was when you were released, David released the stone. You dropped into their their brain like a pebble in a brook. Jeez. They can't get you off their mind. <laughs> yeah, that you, you're just, I can't get your mom off my mind. Sorry to laugh, but that's kind of good. They they can't get you off. Well, their mind. isn't that right? I it's mean, isn't torturing, that right? it's it's Trust torturing me, I, them basically. I'm living rent rent free. Trust me, in the heads of the American left. No, I just think you're. I think that you're okay. I I don't insult people, and I'm not going to start now. I think he's taking advantage of people. I think that's what he's doing right now. I think he's taking advantage of people. He's taking advantage of their gullib uh, gullibility, basically. It is so absolutely wrong what Roger Stone does and what he's been doing to people. So incredibly wrong. To be uh, candid about this, uh, I recognize right now that coming on here and talking about this openly is going to subject me to a whole nother round of vituperation. It had to yeah, here's his persecution complex rearing its ugly head once again. Yeah, Roger, we all recognize that you've done some dirty things in the past, and you're kind of a terrible person for what you, for what you do on a regular basis, even to this day. Um, I don't think that he's really in as much danger as he claims to be. Uh, he is a corrupt political operative, though. Pray about it a long time. I wanted to do it at the right place. I, it became clear to me that Elijah Streams was the right place. That's why I reached out initially to Robin, and then an Elijah moment. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's no question about it. And 
And now I feel, here's what I feel the strongest about. We, we who believe, we can close the portal, but we can only close it through prayer, massive mm -hmm. prayer. We who believe, we can close the portal, but we can only close it through prayer, massive mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. Millions of Christians pray to close the portal. If you look closely, there's like, it's like a swirling cold. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've tried to find, you know, some some natural explanation, mm -hmm. reflection, uh, or an aerostat balloon for weather. No, I, I sent a personal friend down there. He thought I was crazy. I said, hey, do me a favor. Go down there. You just a regular digital camera and see what you see. And he said, we have see that. Me. And Roger, what, how long ago did that? Did they take that picture? Well, roughly? Some of those were sent to me by my friend John Ardwood. I sent another guy down because I wanted to be absolutely sure. I'm not interested in embarrassing anybody here. I yeah. despise myself. Uh, but the, these pictures are only several weeks old. Okay, uh, so yeah. while you're talking, uh, Emily has, we have three of them from you. There's only a couple weeks old, several weeks old, you said. And remember what we just showed you a few minutes ago is months old, three or four months at least. Yeah. So Emily, while you're talking, Roger, show those three photos that your friends took. There is that circular it. thing. It, it, there you can see it. Uh, it's very... What is with this grainy terrible photo i can't make anything out what they said digital camera no digital camera that's modern is going to produce a picture uh, this poor quality this is ridiculous dude if you uh hang on let me just i've never seen a picture this grainy before i don't think this looks like a flip phone from the 2010s honestly what what aspect ratio is this even? It looks like it was taken with an iPhone, but I mean for the aspect ratio, but the graininess tells me it was taken with a flip phone from 2009. And he said it was a digital camera. What digital camera would produce a picture like this? It's terrible. Okay, let's, let's keep listening. There you can see it. Uh, it's very, very clear. Uh, it doesn't move day or night. It's harder to see during the day but you, you see it at night. Uh, and uh, I'm absolutely convinced uh, about the inherent, there it is again, about the inherent evil of what's going on in the White House, what's going on in the country. And I think it's imperative that, that people know about this, that people of good faith, that Christians know about this, and we begin uh, a national, essentially a prayer assault to what are we looking at here? This is this looks like it's it looks like nothing more than just a lens flare at best right here. It was red in the last picture, wasn't it? it this big red thing. What am I even looking at right now? And we begin a, a national, essentially a prayer assault to close the portal. That's good. Close now the there's portal. one during the day that it's harder to see, but that's yeah, but you can see it. It's it's there. It's right there above the White House. So it's always uh, above that gable. You notice yeah. that? Oh, it's it right is. above the gable. It is. Now, Roger, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you're talking about prayer that it needs. We have, we have to close the portal. That's what this is about. We now, mm -hmm. as Christians, our obligation is to close the portal, which is to essentially to drive Satan away. Uh, I can tell you this really is a cult. I feel like if Catholics and Mormons and every other religious group out there that's involved in politics, I feel like if they realized the extent to which this really is a cult that is completely different from their religious beliefs, these groups would be these religious groups would be doing absolutely whatever it took to get them out of positions of power. It would be like Scientology holding this much power. It's truly disturbing stuff, dude. Truly disturbing stuff. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's keep listening. You, in my own life, since my redemption, uh, first of all, on Saturdays, I march on abortion clinics with others. Uh, on Sundays, wow. I travel a lot. Uh, but I, I try to speak at a different church. I try to witness for the Lord at a different wow. church. Uh, I've met many great friends. Satan conti continues to try to put 
temptation in my path. Mm -hmm. But there's there's zero chance, zero chance. I'm a man on a mission now, uh, <laughs> and and I, I and I am I am absolutely adamant about doing his will. I don't think the country. My friend General Michael Flynn, who's a great man, yeah, a great is. Christian, a great constitutionalist. Uh, he gets attacked even more than I do because he was the director of national intelligence and he knows a lot of embarrassing things. Flynn is a, a terrible person. Flynn is an extremist and he's also a traitor to the United States, in my opinion. He was working for a foreign government without reporting that. Like, Flynn is a truly bad person and I'm devastated that he received a pardon by Trump. Uh, about uh, about uh, the evil ones. Oh, and by the way, Greg Locke, as it turns out, is Michael Flynn's pastor. Greg Locke pastors Michael Flynn. Uh, but he says in his speech, you know, I think America may have five years, three years. I don't think we have that long. I think we have six months to a year to save this nation. Uh, yeah. it's, it's that close. And therefore, every decision I make um, it's seen in, in that context. I mean, I just came back from a hard trip to uh, Salt Lake City and then Austin, uh, and it's always heartening. Sure, there are guys who yell at you. You know, I had some guy follow me out of a restaurant last night screaming at me. I'm a oh, well, I really don't believe Roger Stone in anything that he says about his persecution complex, but if, just in case he's telling the truth about being persecuted, Please don't harass Roger Stone. I don't believe in harassment. I don't believe in attacking anybody or, or any of that stuff. Please just leave the guy alone. Uh, I'm a Russian spy. I'm a piece of garbage. I'm a traitor. Donald Trump ruined America. Well, you know, all that's true. But like I said, I don't believe in harassing people. I just don't. That's just not my thing, and I, I don't think it helps us at all. All right, let's keep listening. The same thing. Thank you very much. I'll pray for you. That's that makes him, that makes him even <laughs> angrier. By the way. <laughs> now, Robin, you started to say something as well. What were you about to say there? Honestly, I don't even care if you say you're going to pray for me. I don't care. Um, but like I said, you shouldn't be attacking or harassing people, period. You shouldn't be doing that. 